In this video, I will be performing a normal modes analysis using shells and cylindrical coordinates. Full details of this exercise are on page 394 of the PDF linked in the video description below. First thing I will do is start a new patch round session. Create a new file and I'll call it problem 15. Hit OK here, and what I want to do first is define a new coordinate system. So here under coordinates, three point, the type is cylindrical. Leave the default values here and hit apply. Now I'll go ahead and define two curves. The first one using the line by XYZ method. The units for this example are in inches, pounds, and PSI. Here my first curve will be 0.6666 inches in the extraction from the origin. My next point, or my next curve will be 3.33 inches in the extraction starting from this point. Since auto execute is on, once I click this point, it will automatically create the point. You will see now I have one and two curves here. Next, to define or make my surface, I'll revolve these two curves about the third axis of coordinate system 0. Here, the third axis of coordinate system 0 would be the z axis here. Total angle is 90 degrees, and I'll select these two curves. Since auto execute is on, once you've selected curves 1 and 2, I'll create the two surfaces. Now, I want to mesh this. I'll first set some mesh seeds using the uniform method. Type in one here. I want, for this surface here, I want one element or a mesh seed here along this curve and this curve. Next, I want five elements running down this curve and this top curve. Lastly, I want nine elements down this curve and this curve. And here it's uh, curve three of surface one, and the other one was curve 2 of surface 2. Now I can go ahead and mesh this using the surface mesher. My element shape is try, select uh, surface 1 and 2, and select apply. And now, initially by appearance, this looks like it's the entire section. But if I go to display, finite elements and I show the edges and hide the geometry using this button. I can see that I have two separate bodies here. Surface 1 has its own mesh and surface 2 has its own mesh too. We have to fix this, so under meshing, hit equivalence and hit apply. And you'll see that duplicate nodes have been deleted here, so now it's one continuous body now. So before we had a line here indicating the mesh was separated, but now after equivalencing, the mesh is all one piece. So let me switch this back to, to faces hit apply and the way I got to this fem attributes was through display finite elements. Now to make the other three sections I'll go ahead and uh, perform a mirror operation on these elements. So under meshing click uh, any little thing here and basically you want to get this action form here. Set action to transform select object to element and select method as mirror. So here we'll first define a mirror plane normal. And here since we're dealing with the, I want to mirror this about the y-axis, I'll select my normal as the x direction. So here select the frame direction one, select this coordinate system. Here select these elements and click apply. Now I want to mirror these about the x-axis, so I'll first have to def define a mirror plane about 
with the normal in the Y direction. After hit frame direction 2 and select this coordinate system, I'll change to 0 0.2 here. I'll select all these elements and hit apply. So if you recall before, when I went to display finite elements and hit edges, here now I have, before you saw an entire mesh, in reality you have four separate bodies. And the goal here is to unite all, all, all the elements into one, one entire mesh. To do this, in the meshing tab, hit equivalence. And uh, once you hit equivalence, so this will open a new tab called finite elements. You'll know you're in equivalence when the action is equivalence. You'll hit apply. You notice uh, the pink circles indicate where the duplicate nodes have been created. Now when I back here in fem attributes, you'll notice that uh, those lines that were there before are not indicating that um, this is all one continuous mesh. So here I've uh, gone back to faces and after I hit apply, I get the mesh back. Now I can go and define my materials here under properties. So click isotropic, call this material. Under input properties, we have a Young's modulus of 10 E6 PSI and a Poisson ratio of 0.3. My density is 0.00026. Hit OK, click Apply. Under 2D Properties, click Shell. Type the name as Prop. Under Input Properties, use this material we just created. Your thickness for this example is 0.25 inches. Click OK for your application region. Select Shell. This will hit. This will allow you to select any tri or quad element. I'll simply hit pick all, select all the elements here, hit all, add, OK, and apply. Now I can move on to my boundary conditions. So here in, the, in this tab, I'll hit displacement constraint. I'll simply call this constraint under input data. I wish to prevent translation in the one, two, and three directions using the cylindrical coordinate system. So make sure you select the chord one here. Before it was chord zero, now it's chord one. Hit okay and apply. One thing I forgot to do is ensure that these nodes are using this coordinate system for both the reference and analysis coordinate system. To verify this, you can go to the meshing tab, select action to show node as your object and info as location. Simply click some nodes and you'll find some details of the node. Here I get an indicator that reference and analysis coordinate system are using the rectangular ones. You have to correct this by selecting modify, object to node, and method to edit. Check on analysis coordinate frame and reference coordinate frame. Ensure you've selected cylindrical coordinate system one, and the same for reference. Pick all the nodes and click apply. You'll notice uh, every node is uh, has an indicator on it indicating I've selected it. That's been corrected. So when I go to analysis, I can analyze the entire model. Under solution type, select normal modes. Click OK. Under subcases, well, I'll leave that as, I'll leave this for now. And I'll just submit this job for analysis. Once that is done, I'll import the results and click apply. Go to my results tab. I can view my initial values here. You'll see that these values don't align with what I should be getting. And what I forgot to do is um, when defining my boundary condition, I forgot to select uh, where to apply the condition. So here I've turned on my model tree. 
I've uh, opened the branches up to constraint the one boundary condition I have here. Here, translation is fixed in one, two, and three directions in the coordinate system one, which is a cylindrical coordinate system. But I forgot to add an application region. So what I have to do is select the, the nodes. So let me orient this. I'll use the pick all filter here. So then all I have to do is uh, basically go around the circle and then close the outer nodes. And just basically do what I'm doing here. And you'll notice that I accidentally missed some nodes out there. Or I forgot to select FEM here since we're working with nodes. Pick all again and do the same thing. If, it, if it's sluggish, what you can do is go to Preferences and Graphics, uncheck Hardware Rendering, hit Apply. Click cancel to close that window. And then with that off, I can click faster if uh, my machine happens to be going slow. And I've accidentally double clicked there too fast. So basically close the loop, you double click and um, I accidentally click too fast back there and it selected all the no the wrong nodes. Here I'm just making um, an enclosure for all the outer nodes. Add it. Let me rotate this and uh, you'll see there's an extra node I'd select there so I'll pick that one node and remove it. Let me rotate this just to make sure I haven't accidentally added any nodes. That looks fine. Hit apply. And there we go. We have our boundary condition defined. And just give it a quick inspection to make sure you've selected the outer nodes. Looks good to me. Let's add reanalyze this. Solution type is normal mode. Solution 103. Hit apply. Delete all the ones I had before. I'll import my XDB results. Hit apply. Let me hide this uh, boundary condition here. Let me turn off the model tree. Under results, I finally get the values I should be getting. So I should be getting 721, or I should be getting 734, 2000, 370, and so on. But I get approximate values here. Seven twenty one, two thousand, thirty seven hundred, forty two hundred. And let me get the window back. Two thousand. And that is what we do get here. Now if you want to see a, a better visual representation, you can do a fringe plot. Here select this uh, result case and select eigenvectors here, translational. Click apply. You'll notice first that uh, the value here is not uh, it's not one. Do a quick plot. And here, uh, this will give me the fringe, the nice color. And this will actually give me a deformed result. So when I hit that, you'll get this. You'll notice that here it's uh, thirty-two point six. Ideally, what we want is a, a one here. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So uh, here they, they show a one, a one, and so on. So to do that, if you go back to the analysis tab under entire model analyze, when you modify your subcases, in this case the default subcase, under subcase parameters, this normalization method, switch that to maximum, hit OK, click apply. I'll ask you if you want to resave default and you just click yes, cancel and resubmit this job and replace all your old files. Once that's done, just 
import the XDB results again, hit apply. Under results, click fringe deformation, select this first mode, select this result, the translational eigenvectors, and here do the same thing for deformation result. Click apply. Now you have that one. Before it was a 32.6 or 36.2, I forgot, but uh, now we get the one here. And you can switch between the modes and see the various shapes. And here the, you can see that the undeformed mesh is uh, obstructing the view. So to turn that off, move over and select this deform attributes. Go down to here and uncheck show undeformed. Now it's gone. Uh, you can reset graphics to return it to the original view. Make sure to save, and that concludes this example.